And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Scott Jordan, and you are watching live here at Sellers of Sonoma in beautiful Railroad Square, Santa Rosa, California. Make me work so we can work, but work it out. I promise you, kid, that I'll get so much more than I get. I just haven't. I might have to wait, I'll never give up I guess it's half time and, and the other half's luck Wherever you are, whenever it's right You'll come out of nowhere and into my life And I know that we can be so amazing And baby, your love is gonna change me And now I can see every... And good evening everybody and welcome to uh... TV Tuesday Live here at Cellars of Sonoma. Uh, this is where we talk about wine, we learn about wine, and we educate ourselves about wine. And tonight, we're thrilled to have uh, winemaker Ted Elliott from T.R. Elliott Wines. Ted, welcome. Thank you, Scott. Uh, uh, it's really a thrill to uh, learn a lot about Pinot Noir, and you're going to show us a bunch about Pinot today. Uh, we're going to taste all three of uh, Ted's wines. And uh, um, we'll we'll jump right in. So, um, Ted, so you you make you make three wines. Uh, two are virtually single vineyards, I would say. For the, yes, right, 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 right. And then a blend between the the two single vineyards. Right. Although you cheated on one of these, I know that the yeah, uh, yeah. this is the 2008 uh, three plumes. And I guess you, you put one barrel of the O'Connell Vineyard in with that Hallenberg, right? Well, the, yeah, the way, there's a couple of ways to look at that. Uh, we're going to start by tasting the 2008, which will be a younger wine than the, the others by a year. And so we'll get lighter fruits. But another way to think about this is that uh, the, this is the bottom of a hill, the coolest part. All the cold air goes down to this. And it's a selection that has a, a clone of two clones of Pinot that are very good with cold climates. One of them, called a suitcase clone, mm, we bought back beautiful. from Domaine Romani County in 1995 and cleaned up. So this would be a more feminine wine. They, it tends to develop uh, aromas, lighter aromas, and uh, it's the wine I would start an evening with. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, the nose beautiful. on yeah. this is just oh, yeah. screaming. It, it's stunning. This is. It is uh, fabulous that in that nose. I wish your, your uh, I wish your uh, TV audience could get this. It's a perfume. This is what most real Burgundian lovers love. When you can get this smell, if, if Pinot doesn't have a smell like this, it's uh, it, could, it should be another varietal. That's this right. Is, That's this just is what, got a really beautiful. Oh. Elegant no, nose. It's oh my God! No, we just That's got fabulous. A, we got a great bottle. Didn't we? <laughs> yeah, we sure did. Well, you know, it's funny because we open a lot of wine here, obviously at Cellars of Sonoma, and, and there are times when you open a bottle and it's just right on the money. I mean, oh, yeah. it's just smoking good, yeah. right? Uh, right? It's your company, I'm sure, Scott. Yeah, right. Of course. No, no. the atmosphere right. counts a lot. There's a does. wonderful place to taste wine and show it off, but it is it is mm. it's coming out nice, isn't it? So. Tell the folks, uh, in the production of this wine, what are you aging it in, and for how long, typically? In uh, a... let, and the, uh, I know that it might be disconcerting, but I could go back to the farming first. Sure, absolutely. All of my wines are a reflection of um, the, the, the farming and not so much my winemaking. So here, 2008 was a year where it was pretty chilly in the springtime, and we didn't get quite as much. Uh, the fruit as we wanted, but mm -hmm. what we got was very concentrated, so I didn't have to do much with this. And uh -huh. The next wines I had to do even less. But when you get a wine like this, you really just want to capture the aroma and the color. There's mm -hmm. nothing, you just want to protect that. So as soon mm -hmm. as you get it in, everything you do on the winery side is to make sure you don't lose what came in. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the barrels, which maybe most consumers would think is an important influence, I use only barrels that are one year old, uh, okay. and that will mean that the, uh, the the flavors and the aromas of the fruit are going to show. And uh, you're using French oak barrels? Yeah, these are all French oak all right. barrels, and typically wine barrels are used for three or four years. So one years old still has an impact, mm -hmm. but it won't it won't 
it, it'll just frame very gently. It'll just frame mm -hmm. the, what Mother Nature uh, gave to me. Mm -hmm. uh, so and, I do a pretty minimal, and this is unfiltered. I've been on, I haven't filtered a wine in several years. And, and how long, do you, how long are you aging that for? Uh, this will be barrel. aged for uh, ten months. <clears throat> ten and months. We didn't make much of this. 139 uh, cases, only about five barrels. Uh, so this is a pretty small production. Uh, but I'd say the thing that's important is we we got really wonderful fruit and we just protected it. Took the one-year-old barrels that we had uh, uh, that had this and uh, bottled it unfiltered and boy the color just is right spot on as well. Oh yeah, it's magnificent. Yeah. Uh, the finish is fantastic. Oh man, <laughs> that's beautiful. Let's we're gonna yeah. leave that in the in yeah. the glass. So that we can we can go and uh, and look at them as they as they oh, evolve a little bit in, in the uh, okay. in the in the glass. All right. So next is Questy. Now Questy is a is a blend from the two single vineyards, correct? Yes. Yes. Right. You made a little more of this, but but again, not much. We're talking about very small production wine. Uh, what 33 barrels? I mean, that's yeah. nothing. Yeah. That's nothing. It's tiny micro micro. Uh, farming, without a doubt, that's that's very small. And uh, now, uh, aging process the, the same, basically. You you right? Yes, it is. And and you come up with a formula here: 21 barrels from Hallberg, 12 from O'Connell. How do you arrive at that? I mean, is that just a, a number out of the sky, or are you guys sitting down? Oh, uh, that's a great question. Uh, well, we... I mean, I kind of know the answer, but you want to <laughs> tell these guys, you know. Uh, tell me if I make it too complicated <laughs> well, uh, for the no, audience. That's but okay. We make uh, three three vats of wine, one from the top of a hill, one, one from the bottom, and a little bit from the side. And then I try to make the pick out the most feminine wine that I can, and which is usually from the bottom of the hill, and we had that first. Mm -hmm. And that's typically all from one place and then we do the same thing try to get a wine that expresses a little more masculine flavors uh, it doesn't always turn out that way that typically comes from the top of the hill and that's the wine we're going to have next on the side slope and then a blend of the other two i make a wine that uh, will always be pretty classic russian river pinot and it's classic yeah. because we've blended in some really wonderful aromatics from this mm -hmm. wine that we just had and then some stronger uh, pomard characteristics, which we'll get on the last wine. Uh, and so this third wine, it's, a trick, it, it, it's, it's tricky to do all of these, but you have to separate out, in this case, we said five or six barrels, yes. one-year-old barrels. And you, it's a little bit of a three, you know, third-dimensional chess game, arriving at the best on all of these. This wine has to be spot on because my consumer following that understands this is my, I'm telling them this is Russian River. This is as good as Russian River is. Uh, so it, it's got that, that earthy nose in it. You have a question? Yep. All right, let's fire off with a question. We got a question from the audience. Go ahead. Dan, my buddy Dan. Dan, how's it going, man? It's really nice and warm here, sorry. <laughs> Where's Dan calling? Iowa. From? <laughs> Hi, Dan. <laughs> Okay, so the question is, um, for someone that hasn't tasted it, well, what characteristics should they be noticing in your in your wines? What do you really want them to take away, I guess? Is what well, I want them to have a great experience. Uh, one characteristic would be uh, a charm, I suppose. Uh, these wines should have uh, an appeal, and I hate to say it's a... Uh, but it's a, it's a really sensual, Pinot should be a sensual, charming experience. More, that, I mean, that's how I think what would differentiate Pinot Noir from many other uh, grape varieties. Well, and Pinot Noir is a finicky grape, right? I mean, it's yeah. a little tougher to work with, yeah. right? Yeah. It's, right. it's a thin-skinned grape. Right. Um, you, you rack these, uh, uh, how often do you rack them while you're you know, in the aging process in the barrel? Well, that's a good question, and uh, that can depend a little bit. We don't want to move the wine around or touch it uh -huh. very much at all. You just kind of want to, as I said on this first wine, just let it be natural. Mm -hmm. Racking is the process of taking wine from one barrel and moving it to another barrel. Uh, the advantage of racking is that some of the things that have settled to the bottom then aren't going to 
uh, come back into the wine. On the other hand, you've moved it. So we make that decision, uh, uh, each vintage it might be different. In a lighter vintage where you don't want influence from the leaves, the things that are the old uh, yeast that are at the bottom, you just, on a lighter vintage, might get rid of that leaves because it's going to be too much. But the, the, the general answer is I try not to move these wines more than once for sure because it's got to go to the bottle right. and twice for, the, for sure because it's got to be blended. Right. So two movements would be ideal. And that's, that's, and that's different than, let's say, if you're doing a Bordeaux blend or, oh, yeah. or a uh, uh, Merlot or something like that, right? Uh, well, I they can't. tend to rack those a little bit more often, like three, maybe every three months as uh, much, you know, uh, in Scott's, some cases. Uh, Scott's right about that because uh, the uh, Pinot Noir is, is very delicate, and the more you oxygenate it, which is, happens when you move it, uh, the more likely it is to lose some of the aromas and the softness that we want to trade. There are other red wines, Cabernet is a good example, where they, they're really brutes. And yeah. It's good to move them around, get a little oxygen in them, round right. them a little bit. It's like taking that uh, that uh, shellfish that you just caught off the coast and pounding it. Pounding it. it and yeah. Yeah. I love it. And that softens it, I but love it. not with Pinot. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to take a, a break, but not from the live feed. Those of you watching live, you'll continue to watch live. Going to ask a question, and then we'll go uh, to our breaks. We, we, we're just stopping the record side. Uh, our question today is, uh, which of these red grapes is known for its tannic structure wine with tastes of chocolate, black currants, and tobacco? Magic word there is currants. Uh, the A is Cabernet Sauvignon. B is Merlot. C is Grenache. D, Zinfandel. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Uh, those of you watching